Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Salah Tessinata from Medical Unit 2, Dr. University of Health Sciences. Today we have a very important topic, sexually transmitted diseases, clinical features, diagnosis and management. Now, what is a STD? Now, what is a STD? STD are infections that are spread from person to person through intimate sexual contact. STDs are dangerous because they are easily spread and it is hard to tell just by looking who has an STD. Okay. Now the types of STD, there are many types of STD, but the important one are the bacterial, viral and parasitic. Among the bacteria, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and granuloma inguinae, while the viral, human papilloma virus, herpes virus, HIV, and hepatitis, especially hepatitis B. Among the parasitic infection, pubic lice, scabies, and trichomoniasis are the most important one. Now, how they present? So, the presentations uh, like ulcers, it may be painful or painless. Painful ulcers are chancroids and genital herpes, while the painless ulcers are syphilis, lymphogranuloma venerum, and granuloma inguinae. Some present with discharge, vaginal or urethral discharge, like gonorrhea, Chlamydia, non gonococcal, and trichomonas, these may present with discharge in female vaginal discharge and in male urethral discharge. Now, other presentation, they may present as warts, itching, rash, or burning sensation during urination. How they diagnose? The history is very important. Then physical examination and lab investigation. We will take it um, individually. And now the history, the detailed history, especially the sexual history is very important. The most infectious require skin to skin contact or exchange of body fluids for transmissions. Physical examination, examine the inguinal region for rash, adenopathy, skin lesions, examine the vulva for lesions and ulcerations, use a speculum to examine cervix and vagina for discharge and lesions. Palpation of the uterus and adnexa, note the presence of tenderness and mass in at Nexa. Now, laboratory testing, there are different tests for different STDs, depends on the history, symptoms, and clinical finding. All patients who seek STDs testing should be screened for syphilis and HIV. Sexual partners of patients Diagnosed with sexually transmitted disease should be tested and treated to prevent reinfection. 50% of patients diagnosed with one sexually transmitted infection will have coexisting infection. Now come to the herpes genitalis. 
this herpes is very contagious. 75% of sexual partners of infected individuals will contract the disease. And 85% is caused by type 2 herpes simplex virus. Some people with herpes never develop sores, but are still contagious and may spread it to other without knowing. Symptoms usually shows two to 20 days after contact and may be extremely painful or mild, outbreaks of blisters and ulcers. Once infected with HSV, people remain infected for life. In female, it produces blister around the vagina, fever and headaches, while in male, it causes sore or clusters of blisters on the pants. This is um, male herpes. Uh, he shows these uh, blisters on over penis. Now this is herpes in female. Uh, again, blisters around the vagina. Now the clinical course of uh, herpes, two to five days after infection, patient experiences burning and tingling in vulva and vagina. Three to seven days after infection, patient will develop very painful vesicular and ulcerated lesions. Many patients will have difficulty urinating because of pain. In, an, in addition to the painful lesion, patient can develop malaise, fever, inguinal, adenopathy. Patient may also develop aseptic meningitis one week after the lesions. Patient will have fever, headache, and stiff neck, but these symptoms resolve within one week without any treatment. Physical examination shows clear vesicles, which may burst and form shallow, painful ulcer with the red border. Vesicles and ulcers may appear on vulva, vagina, cervix, and buttocks. Now, how, how diagnose these herpes? mostly based on the typical history and physical finding. Patients with recurrent herpes will know themselves when they develop a recurrence based on the typical symptoms. Herpes virus is shed for three weeks after lesions appear. Lesion can be cultured for herpes. The lesion may be scrapped and scraping is stained under the microscope giant cells may be formed which are characteristics of herpes infection. Treatment. Treatment should be focused on the lesion themselves and the symptoms. Keep the lesions clean, dry and avoid bacterial infection. Topical painkiller or anesthetic such as lidocaine may help. Oral medications such as acyclovir only decrease the duration of the symptoms and must be started within three days of the start of symptoms to be effective. Oral medication can be used to reduce the chance of recurrence herpes in patients with frequent episodes. Herpes and pregnancy. If herpes lesions are present at the time of the vaginal delivery, there is a 50% chance of transmission to the baby. And 80% of the babies infected with herpes at birth will die. Caesarean section recommended for patients who have active herpes lesions while in labor. Now come to the human papilloma virus. It's an important virus most have no symptoms. Some develop genital warts called condyloma acuminata. And some strain of this human papilloma virus causes cancers. This is condyloma acuminata penile. And this is condyloma acuminata vulva. The types of 
3v many types but these are important one and two causing the plantar and common warts six and 11 causes condylometa and laryngeal warts and 16 and 18 causes anogenital malignancy now how to detect the hpv infection clinically there is genital warts and epithelial defects and cellular changes caused by the war is seen by pap smear screening and directly detecting the virus by PCR. Detection previous infection by antibody against HPV, but it is for the research on. Now come to the syphilis. Syphilis is caused by spirochetes, treponema pallidum, and it infects the vulva, vagina, and cervix. And there are many types of syphilis from primary to tertiary, and it can involve any part of the body. Now, stages or types of the syphilis primary, secondary, latent, which may be early or late and the late or tertiary, which involve any organ, but mainly neurosyphilis, cardiovascular syphilis, and tumor. Now, primary syphilis, which is also called, the lesion is called the chancre. Incubation period, nine to 90 days, usually average is 21 days. Develop at the site of the contact, classically single, painless, green, clean based, indurated ulcer with firm raised borders. Atypical presentation may occur, mostly anogenital, but may occur at any site. It is non tender, it has non tender regional adenopathy. It is very infectious and maybe. There is dark field positive, but, but serologically negative. This is primary syphilis chancre over the penis. This is again primary syphilis chancre vagina, around the vagina. And oral chancres in primary syphilis on the lower lips. Now the secondary syphilis. Six weeks to six months after primary shanker, this is diffuse, non pruritic indurated rash, usually involve all the body, including the palms and the soles, and associated with fever, malaise, headaches, sore throat, myalgia, generalized lymph adenopathy, 10% cases may present with hepatitis and some uh, with the renal involvements, iritis, anterioritis, and the bone involvement as well. And some may present with the CSF pileocytosis and symptomatic meningitis is seen only in less than one person cases. Now the secondary syphilis, the, the symptoms on skin rash, which is already discussed, this is diffuse one, superficial, and may leave residual pigmentation. And condylometallata, it is formed by coalescence of the large pale flat top papules usually occurs in warm, moist areas such as perineum. It is highly infectious. Mucosal lesion, 30% of secondary syphilis patients develop mucus patch. Slightly raised oval area covered by grayish white membrane with a pink base that does not bleed, highly infectious. This is the rash of uh, on palm in secondary syphilis. This is rash over the face. 
This is secondary syphilis papillosquamous rash. This is rash that appears in the plantar surface of the feet and this is again vaginal area you, you may have some words like this is alopecia areta can present like that secondary syphilis now come to the latent syphilis it may be early or late positive syphilis serology without clinical signs of syphilis and in this case, CSF is normal. It begins with the end of the secondary syphilis and may last for a lifetime. Patient may or may not have primary or secondary syphilis. Disease known to cause occasional false positive non-treponemal test reaction for syphilis, such as SLE and congenital syphilis must be excluded before the diagnosis of latent syphilis can be made. Early latent, the first year after the resolution of primary or secondary lesions, a reactive serological test for syphilis is an asymptomatic individual who has had a negative serological test within the preceding year. This is highly infectious. Late latent, usually not infectious, except for the pregnant women who may transmit infection to her fetus. Late syphilis, no, tertiary syphilis, is also called the tertiary syphilis. Is the destructive stage of the disease. Lesion develop in the skin, bone, viscera, any viscera, and the main types are gumetus, cardiovascular, and neurosyphilis. Can be crippling and life-threatening. Blindness, deafness, deformity, lack of coordination, paralysis, dementia may occur. It is usually very slowly progressive, bearing certain neurological syndromes which may develop suddenly due to the end arthritis and thrombosis in the CNS. Late syphilis is non-infectious. <coughs> Neurosyphilis divided into five groups which may overlap. Asymptomatic neurosyphilis, syphilitic meningitis, meningovascular syphilis, general paresis, and Tabs dorsalis. Cardiovascular syphilis may not manifest clinically until 20 to 30 years after infection, but usually begins within 5 to 10 years after initial infection. Primarily, aortic insufficiency and aortic aneurysm of the ascending aorta, other large arteries may sometimes be involved and rarely the coronary ostia may be involved. Caused by obliterative <laughs> and arthritis of the vasa vasorum with the resulting damage to the intima and media of the great vessels causing dilatation of the ascending aorta and eventually resulting in stretching of the ring of the aortic valve, producing aortic insufficiency. The valve curves remain normal. Asymptomatic aortitis is best diagnosed by the visualizing linear calcification in the wall of the ascending aorta, more common in men than in women, and possibly in black than in white. The lead benign syphilis, the guma. The guma was the most common complication of late syphilis. Guma may be single or multiple, and cutaneous guma may be confused with skin lesions of TB, sarcoidosis, leprosy, and deep fungal infection. May be destructive but respond rapidly to treatment, thus is relatively benign. Late benign syphilis continued. May also involve deep visceral organs, particularly the respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, bones, larynx, lungs, liver. In earlier century, most of the nose and palate commonly resulted in the septal perforation and disfiguring facial lesions. 
bone involvement may cause a characteristic symptoms of nocturnal bone pain. Now, this is the summary of clinical manifestation of syphilis. Primary syphilis, usually painless ulcer, that is known as chancre with adenopathy. Secondary syphilis, present with rash, mucocutaneous lesions, adenopathy, hepatitis, arthritis, glomerulonephritis, condyloma latent. Latent syphilis, asymptomatic. And the tertiary syphilis depends upon which part is involved, which organ is involved. This is late syphilis, serpingius gumata of fora. It has wavy uh, area and, and uh, that's why it is called serpingius. This is the late syphilis ulcerating guma. This is congenital syphilis, perforation of palate. This is again congenital syphilis, the Hutchison's teeth, peg-like teeth, especially the premolar. Now, how to diagnose beside the physical examination and non, some tests are important, which we do, the non-treponomal antigen test. That is the VDRL and RPR. These tests, if positive, then we go to another test for the confirmation. Uh, these include three tests, the triponomal antibody test, TPHA, TPPA, FDA absorption test. And another is the polymerase chain reaction. And finally, cerebrospinal fluid examination. Now, the treatment of primary, secondary, and only latent. Benzathinpalacine G, 2.4 million units intramuscular once, and in late latent or uncertain duration. Benzathinpalacine, same dose, 2.4 million, intramuscular weekly for three weeks. And tertiary without neurosyphilis, again, benzathinpalacine is a drug of choice, 2.4 million units, intramuscular, weekly, for three weeks. Now, gonorrhea, another very common STDs. Gonorrhea is caused by miseria gonorrhea, a gram-negative diplococcus typically found inside polymorphonuclear cells. It is transmitted during sexual activity and has its greatest incidence in the 15 to 29 years old age group. The incubation period is usually two to ten, two to eight days. Now, how they manifest? It manifests as a urethritis or cervicitis. Sometimes it is disseminated and it may cause as a, a present uh, conjunctivitis. This is the gonococcal urethritis. There is a discharge, a white discharge from the mitus. This is disseminated gonococcal infection. <laughs> this is Bartholin abscess in female. This is gonococcal ophthalmia. Now, differential diagnosis, non-gonococcal arthritis due to the claim idea, maybe a differential and reactive arthritis also a differential. Now, how to diagnose? Gram stain of urethral discharge in men, especially during the first week after onset, show gram negative diplococci in polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Gram stain is less often positive in women. Culture has been the gold standard for diagnosis, particularly when the gram stain is negative. Nucleic acid amplification test for N. gonorrhea. Treatment. Uncomplicated cases, ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or doxycycline for seven days. 
and cefixime 400 milligram in combination with azithromycin or doxycycline is an alternative. Disseminated gonococcal infection needs ceftriaxone daily until 48 hours after improvement begins. Advent time the therapy may be switched to cefixime daily to complete at least one week of antimicrobial therapy. Fluoroquinolone, including the ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin for seven days also is effective, provided the isolate is susceptible. Now, trichomoniasis. Trichomoniasis is a sexually transmitted infection caused by the motile parasitic protozoan Trichomonas vaginalis. It is one of the most common STIs worldwide. Trichomonasis is typically found in sexually active patients. The organism is most common, commonly isolated from vaginal secretion in women and urethral secretions in men. Transmissions occur predominantly via sexual intercourse. Symptoms in female range from one none to severe pelvic inflammatory disease. Women with trichomoniasis frequently report an abnormal vaginal discharge with may be prolent, frothy, or bloody. Frothy vaginal discharge, which is thought to be the classic presentation of trichomoniasis, may be observed in only 12% of patients with this infection. May present with cervicitis, Purulent discharge in the endocervical canal and easily induce endocervical bleeding. May present with vaginitis, vaginal discharge, which may be accompanied by vulva itching, irritation, and bad odor. Symptoms in male, usually asymptomatic carrier state, mild symptomatic disease in some patients, in acute trichomoniasis. May present as a urethritis, may present with discharge, urethral discharge, and some patients report pain in urethra, some testicular pain or lower abdominal pain. May present as a prostitis or obstructive widening symptoms may also some have. Now the diagnosis made by saline vitamin Mount evaluation, standard culture, pH testing, and WIF test. Molecular technique for detecting antigen, DNA, or RNA. Treatment contains the metronidazole, which is treatment of choice, and single dose therapy, two gram orally is effective as prolonged therapy with 500 milligram twice daily for seven days. Tinidazole has a longer half-life than metronidazole. Single dose therapy consists of two gram taken with food. Cure rates from 86 to 100%. Now come to the HIV type HIV-1, the most common worldwide, and HIV-2, more common in West Europe. Hallmark of symptomatic HIV infection is immunodeficiency caused by continuing viral replication. The virus can infect all cells experiencing T4, CD4 antigen, which HIV uses to attach to the cells. What once it enters a cell, HIV can replicate and cause cell fusions or that. A latent state is also established with integration of the HIV genome into cell genome. The cells principally infected is the CD4, that is helper inducer, lymphocytes. With increasing duration of infection, the number of CD4 lymphocyte falls. There is certain diseases which occurs with different absolute CD4 lymphocyte count. If it is around 500, 
bacterial infection like tuberculosis, herpes simplex, her, uh, viral infection, herpes simplex, herpes zoster, and vaginal candidiasis, hairy leukoplakia, and Kaposi sarcoma are common. While when the CD4 count around 200, pneumocystosis, toxoplasmosis, cryptococcosis, coxiidomycosis, and cryptosporoidosis the common. While if absolute CD4 less than 50, then it is it causes disseminated MAC infection, histoplasmosis, CMV retinitis, and CNS lymphoma. Clinical finding HIV infection remain asymptomatic for years with a mean time of approximately 10 years. Physical examination may be entirely normal. Physical signs specific for HIV infection include hairy leukoplakia of the tongue, disseminated Kaposi sarcoma, and cutaneous bacillary angiomatosis. Generalized lymphadenopathy is common early infection. Investigation, how, how diagnose? HIV enzyme leaks immunosorbent assay, ELISA. Western blood test, HIV rapid antibody test, absolute CD4 lymphocyte count, CD4 lymphocyte percentage, and HIV viral load test. These are the different tests which we perform. Complication, central nervous system diseases like toxoplasmosis, lymphoma, HIV associated dementia, cryptococcal meningitis, HIV myelopathy, pulmonary diseases, pneumocystis pneumonia, bacterial, mycobacterial, and viral pneumonias, Kaposi sarcoma, non Hodgkin lymphoma, and interstitial pneumonitis, oral lesions like candidiasis, leukoplakia, hairy leukoplakia, and aphthous ulcers. Viral dermatitis, herpes, molluscum contagiosum, bacterial dermatitis, staphylococcal infection, bacillary angiomatosis, fungal rash, and rash due to dermatous fights and candidia. These all are common when CD4 count decline. HIV related malignancies, Kaposi sarcoma, non Hodgkin lymphoma, Hodgkin disease anal dysplasia and squamous cell carcinoma. These may occur in HIV-related malignancies. This is the oral candidiasis which is present in this HIV patients. This is oral hairy leukoplakia. This is bacillary angiomatosis and molluscum contagiosum. No. Treatment, the heart therapy, highly active antiretroviral therapy is given in uh, patients along with the underlying infection. Treatment of underlying infection needed. Thank you.